Hey, what's up everybody? How, how's everybody doing? Um, sorry I haven't posted content in a while. Um, I'm going to be posting content regularly again, um, at least once a week. I'll be trying to drop a video for you guys. I enjoy making this content. Um, I enjoy the, the comments that people leave. Um, it gives me stuff to look into. So whatever you guys are wanting to see or wanting to know or want more information on, just leave me a comment and I'll look it up um, and see what I can do. I happen to see like a lot of the comments were saying stuff about Jesse and wanting to know where this ritual abuse takes place. Um, it, it sounds crazy, but this ritual abuse is like not limited to one place. I mean, this goes down in universities, colleges, other castles, like Christian churches. I mean, some of the stuff that I've read in um, this book I'm getting ready to tell you guys about um, it's just kind of, it's really far-fetched for me, um, but, you know, I mean, uh, tr you know, reality is all, most of the time, stranger than fiction, so, you know, I mean, y there's really no telling what's, you know, true and not true, um, it's, it's a heavy topic to really cover, too, so, yeah, um, so I reread this book that um, I'd read probably close to 20 years ago. And this will kind of tie in with um, Jessie, what she's been saying, and about, you know, ritual abuse and kind of give you guys the guidelines on um, how, you know, these brides of Satan, I, I mean, it's terrifying the stuff that they go through. It's insane to me. Um, and it's, you know, the way that they secretly get involved in people's life is really, uh, I mean, what gets me is that's, re it's really scary because they take advantage of people when, you know, um, let's just get into the story. How about that? So anyways, um, I reread this book. It's called He Set the Captives Free. It's about, um, the headwoods of the United States turning their life over to Christ. Um, I mean, I am a Christian. I believe in God. Um, I'm not saying everybody else is wrong. You believe what you believe. That's fine. Um, you know, I, I'm not that type of Christian where I'm going to be like, oh, you know, you're wrong. You know, that's, I'm just not that type of person. So, um, anyways, this, this lady was named Elaine. She was born with a cleft palate, um, no nose. So, I mean, you know, these are severe, um, medical conditions, you know, and she had a single mom. So, you know, a single mom on welfare, being able to pay for this, not going to happen, you know? So, um, this nurse happened to come up to her and said, Hey, look, you know, um, we can go on and make sure that everything's taken care of if you give us a vial of your, your daughter's blood. So the mom being naive and you know, thinking, hey, I, I just want to save my daughter. She goes on and, um, you know, gives him a vial of this blood. Um, not knowing that this had basically tapped Elaine in for the rest of her life. Like, basically them giving her blood to them, um, you know, opened up that connection of, uh, you know, being demonically um, oppressed and stuff like that. Um, she started noticing that she had like just these weird powers. Like she knew that she was different than everybody else, but didn't really know what it was. Um, fast forward to, uh, um, she's in high school and uh, she was got, getting picked on by the head of the football squad. And uh, she doesn't remember what happens. Blacks out and there's five teachers pulling her off of the head of the football team. Now this is, a little lady, you know, um, probably freshman, sophomore in high school, you know, just imagine that against one of these big football players. Come on now, there's something going on there. Um, but she, um, you know, after that, she uh, ends up meeting a friend, you know, it was her first like real friend and uh, her friend had asked her, hey, you wanna go to the summer camp? cool, you know, hey, I got a new friend, I want to go to the summer camp, check everything out, so she goes to the summer camp, and uh, 
she starts noticing that there's, you know, there's tarot cards being read, you know, this is like a secluded place in the middle of nowhere. And, uh, you know, there's just a lot of strange going on. You could tell there was a lot of occult activities, um, tarot cards, um, psychic readings, you know, everything of the sorts. Um, so when she's in this summer camp, she was asked, Hey, you know, do you want to sign your life over to Satan? And she refused, kept refusing. And, uh, you know, I mean, this is coming from, um, the high priestess was asking her to join. Now, I mean, high priestess, anything like that is a very powerful, um, human being, if you want to call them that. I don't think they really are at that point. Um, you know, um, since she refused, so this heavily guarded, um, you know, security guard came up to her and, um, you know, said, hey, like knocked her with the gun and said, hey, you know, respect the high priestess, threw her in a cell. And uh, until she was ready to, um, you know, go on and say, hey, um, you know, I'll go on and sign. Eventually she goes on and gives in, you know, because they said, hey, look, here's your house, here's your family, we'll kill them all. And, uh, you know, I don't, I don't know about you, but me personally, if it has anything to do with my family, okay. I, I, I stop, I give in, you know, um, not really trying to laugh about it, but you know, when it comes to somebody's family, you know, that's, that's a deep one. So, um, after she accepted, um, you know, being a part of this, uh, satanic cult, being a part of, uh, Satanism and stuff, she was, um, like brought into this room and, uh, this was with the high priestess and, um, you know, a couple other high rankings and they conjure up this demon and, um, this demon, you know, uh, appears in like, you know, uh, just, uh, a really handsome man, you know, like basically what she said she would want in a man. Um, so that's how this demon appeared to her. Um, I probably am not saying this demon's name right, but it's main no hot. I believe I, I don't really, I know I probably butchered that. Sorry about that guys. Um, but she said as soon as she gave in and, um, you know, said, hey, I'm gonna accept this demon now. This demon was to like live with her for the rest of her life, give her all this power, all this other stuff, basically anything that she wanted. But this is the other side of that. She didn't want anybody to know that she was what, this high ranking witch or anything. She wanted all this kept secret. She didn't want her family knowing. I mean, you know, it, it I don't think anybody would want to know that. Um, so, um, she said when she accepted this demon that it, um, came into her body and it transformed into its demon form and which was this hideous creature that, um, you know, just ugly, nasty hair, you know, his, um, uh, beautiful brown hair, um, turned into like stringy hair. Um, I kind of thought of, uh, Gollum from Lord of the Rings, uh, is what it kind of brought to mind. I don't know, probably a lot worse than that, but, um, yeah, I mean, she said when it entered her that it was, you know, one of the most painful things she'd ever been through in her life. Um, so after this, you know, she, like these witches, warlocks and stuff would like do battle with each other. This is where like, um, it, it gets really like, I, I'm, I'm not even going to discuss a lot of what's in the book because it gets very dark. And I mean, probably YouTube wouldn't even let me put out this video, to be honest, if I were to, um, say everything that's in the book. Um, but you know, she accepts this demon in, um, she starts 
they like um, introduce her to this older Chinese man that like got her very fluent in martial arts, weapons training, all this kind of stuff. Like this is where I kind of am like, oh, I don't know, this sounds a little too crazy to me, but you know, hey, I'm just giving you guys info. Um, but, you know, she goes on to say that um, she, they would like battle against these um, different witches and stuff. And mind you, Elaine was not into like hum human sacrifice. She said that she held human life very dearly. So she like was always getting punished for not doing human or animal sacrifices. Like they would attack her, you know, rip her to shreds and all kinds of stuff. Um, <clears throat> so one day she's um, going into battle with another, um, you know, witch. And she basically, I mean, this was a very powerful witch. She said she attacked her and pulled out <clears throat> all the demons from her, um, you know, and to, basically until the point of death, she said, you know, there was maybe one demon left that was, you know, keeping her alive. And finally, the the lady, her name was Sarah, um, the witch named Sarah just tapped out and said, hey, look, I'm, I'm good. Walked away from it and spent several days in the hospital. Now, this is where um, Elaine starts looking at, like, turning her life over to Christ and stuff. Um you know, the, the sacrifices aren't just, um, and, you know, wherever they have their congregations, it's not like it's always in, you know, it's not in one area there. And they don't just do this stuff in like castles, like in eyes wide shut and all that kind of stuff. I mean, this stuff is done in our universities, colleges, uh, you know, Christian churches. Actually, Elaine said that while she was doing all this Satanist stuff, she was involved with the Christian church. Um, which is easy to believe. I mean, there's, you know, a lot of people making a lot of money off Christianity. Um, you know, so, but anyways, at this point in time, like Sarah starts giving her life over to Christ and, um, Elaine, you know, really started seeing that transformation and that kind of like, you know, started the process of her wanting to change her ways. Now, um, one day they are, um, told to go attack this, um, like great pastor. I, they didn't release names or anything, but when they go to his house, I mean, this is all astral projecting and stuff. Um, you know, they astral project to go over this guy's house and they try to attack him in spiritual form. Now, when they do this, his house is lined up. I mean, they, they said that these angels basically, um, you know, were shoulder to shoulder with each other. Like they called them, uh, I believe the Lynx angels, um, like nothing could get in between them, which I, I can believe that. Um, I've read a lot of books about, you know, spirituality and, uh, fighting, you know, demonic entities and stuff like that. Um, it's kind of why I got the channel I do is, um, because I'm, I like a lot of the darker stuff. Um, so, you know, they, they go and try to attack this, um, you know, big pastor and nothing can get through. So they're all just, you know, angry. I mean, as angry as you can get because, you know, they're realizing like, hey, you know, we, like, we're not going to be able to get through here. Like, you know, Satan is telling us we're all powerful, but these angels aren't letting us do a thing, you know? Um, so Elaine starts, you know, um, she goes in the hospital because she, I believe, like refused to do a, um, a sacrifice. So these demons attacked her. This is where she meets the author of the book. So Rebecca is um, in the hospital and in this town, they didn't really give exact locations, but I, um, I, I know it's in California. I want to say right outside of Los Angeles. Um, they said a lot of demonic stuff, a lot of occultic stuff was going around in this town. So it wasn't abnormal to see like people 
um, getting attacked demonically and stuff. Um, <clears throat> so she meet, she meets Rebecca and, uh, you know, there's just something different about Rebecca. Like, um, she just had a glow about her, something different than, um, you know, anybody that she had met, you know, um, she got kind of overpowered by, uh, you know, the love of Christ. And, uh, so she starts trying to, she starts backing away from, you know, the satanic cult, giving her life over to Christ. And uh, basically I'm going to leave off with that. Um, and I'm going to get into some of the other stuff that was said in the book. <clears throat> so this is where things get a little weird for me. So she says that, you know, in this, in these satanic cults and stuff like that, that there is uh, werewolves, vampires, all this kind of stuff, but they aren't, they're not like living beings. These are like soulless nothings. Like all they're sent here to do is discipline these occultic members and just destroy and cause chaos. They're basically, you know, um, the arm of Satan or whatever, as she says in this book. So, um, yeah, that, I mean, that's kind of, I, I don't know if I believe that or don't believe it, you know, um, a lot of this fiction has to be based on some form of reality, I would like to think. Um, so I don't know. I mean, I think it's awesome that, uh, a lot of this info is getting exposed now and a lot of this, uh, occultic activity is being, uh, brought into the light. It's awesome, man. Um, I really, this is one of the best reads I've ever, ever read. Um, so if you guys get a chance to read it, um, it's He Set the Captives Free by Rebecca, Re eh, Rebecca Brown, MD. Um, sorry if I'm still trying to work out the kinks on, um, you know, making content and stuff like that. So bear with me. Um, leave a comment on what you guys would like me to talk about. Um, and thank you for tuning in. Hope you guys have a good day. Bye.